Welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at how exoplanets get their name. Now the first thing to note is that an exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star other than our sun. So it's outside of our solar system. And also the names they have are more like a code compared to the names we're more familiar with, with planets in our solar system, so like Earth, Mars, Venus. These are a collection of letters and numbers instead. So this is their scientific designations, and there's a few here of different planets. And we're going to have a look at how it gets that scientific designation, depending on what star it's orbiting, what planet it is. So the first part of that can relate to the host star or the astronomical catalogue of the star. So, for example, Proxima Centauri is one of our nearest stars, and the planet orbiting it will be given its name at the beginning of it. So it takes the host star's name to start with. Or, if it's from an astronomical catalogue, it will take the catalogue name of that star instead. So HD 219666 would be the catalogue name of this particular star. The other way in which the first part of that name can be acquired is from the scientific instrument or project that discovered the exoplanet in the first place. So here you would have Kepler or TOI which would be the test telescope and this would then give the first part of the name to the exoplanet. And then that number afterwards would relate to the number in the scientific instrument project discovery. So it relates to how it was discovered. Now Kepler relates to the Kepler Space Telescope and this is one of the most prolific telescopes for finding exoplanets. It was designed to look for planets that passed in front of the star, so the transit method, and it has discovered the bulk of exoplanets so far, actually, has the largest amount detected. Now we have TESS, so TESS is the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, and the TOI relates to an object of interest, or a TESS object of interest. So these are stars that have given a signal that could hint that there's a planet there and then require follow-up work so they're given a designation of TOI which then requires the follow-up work so then you actually have this name here so TOI 270b would be a planet around that star. Now the last part of this name or this scientific designation relates to the actual planet itself so here we have B. Now B would be the first planet, C would be the second and D would be the third now, why doesn't it start at A? Well, this star is actually A. So, it doesn't start with A because the, 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 well, the, the star is A, the planet is then B, and then it goes from C to D. It's also worth noting that the star is uppercase. So, it would be uppercase A if it was a single star. If it was a double star system or triple star system, then it would be given B and C. But these would be uppercase. The planets are lowercase and it will start from B. So it will be B, C, D, E and carry on depending on how many planets that you have there. And finally, they are ordered in when they were discovered, not their distance from the star. So it might be that the biggest planets are easier to actually detect and they might not be ordered biggest to smallest in the system. So you might find that when you look at the distances from the star, they might appear a bit more random, but it's because it's when they were discovered and not their distance from the star, which might seem a little bit odd. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.